Hi everyone, I'm Patrick Odellini, Director of Earthquake Safety for the City and County of San Francisco. And today we're hosting the city's first ever earthquake retrofit fair here at the historic Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. The point of today is to teach people about the new mandatory soft story retrofit ordinance and connect them with the services they need. Why don't we go inside and take a look? We can save thousands of lives by retrofitting soft story buildings before the next earthquake. 60,000 San Franciscans live in vulnerable soft story apartment buildings, and if these buildings are retrofitted, this allows people to shelter in place, sleep in their own beds while repairs are proceeding and the city is recovering. We're here at the Earthquake Retrofit Fair, and this is an event designed to connect folks that either have to comply with the mandatory soft story ordinance requirements, or want to do a voluntary retrofit on their property to really connect with the resources that they need. I came here wondering what I needed to do as an owner of an apartment building that does have a soft story on the first floor, what I needed to do in order to comply with the new rules that went into effect last year. And after talking to some of the property owners, they said, hey, we want an event where this is all in one spot. We don't want to go to 10 different events. And we heard them. So the Department of Building Inspection sent out roughly 6,000 notices to property owners advising them of these new requirements. Every single one of those property owners also got a letter from us telling them about this event. But what we've noticed and what we try to be sensitive to is not everyone can attend an event. If you have it in the middle of the day, people want to come in the evening. If you have it in the evening, people want to come in the middle of the day. So this event spans the afternoon in the, and the evening and the idea to encompass all of this. Well, I'm excited to be here today at the Earthquake Retrofit Fair. It is amazing to see all those people here because we are faced with risk every day in San Francisco. And it's critical for us to be prepared, to respond, and to recover from disasters as quickly and efficiently as possible. I've been to a lot of city events and trade shows, expos. This one had a tremendous turnout. The superstructure of the building represents the superstructure of an apartment building. It's very stiff with a lot of walls. And the lower part of the building, particularly on these buildings that are in the corner, there's no support on either side, and they shake quite a bit. What that does is it makes it dissimilar from the floors above, and in heavy shaking, in an instance of an earthquake, that top floor is gonna have more mass, and that's why you see the damage that you saw in 1989. And then furthermore, in the Northridge earthquake in 1994, we saw significant damage of these types of buildings. And we know that they're just bad actors structurally. Here what we're doing is simulating a retrofit on a building. One way we can do that is by adding steel frames. Typically a building like this, you want to brace in both directions. Now you can see how strong and secure the building is. We have adopted a 30-year earthquake safety implementation program of which there's a mandatory soft story retrofit requirement. And this is an example of work being done by our office to help mitigate the risk posed by earthquakes. This is a way that we ensure continuity of operations for both the city and our private sector partners. I had questions about what kind of professionals are involved in this. I want to start to put together a team of people to help me get through this. I'm a structural engineer and I've worked in the San Francisco Bay Area my entire life and I'm thrilled at the quality of contractors and engineers that are here. What we've done is we've taken one big venue, the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium, and put all the resources in one place. You have some of the manufacturers here that make some of these retrofit products. You have financing, you have public policy makers, you have engineers, contractors. USGS is here today, Structural Engineers Association, Rebuilding Together. The Department of Building Inspections here, the Earthquake Safety Implementation Program, Office of the City Administrator, Department of the Environment, and a long list of other participating partners within our own city family. All of those bring one little piece of what is a broad community resiliency approach. Last night I felt doomed, but I actually feel a little more positive about things now. You know, I felt like, how are we going to pay for this? We didn't want to create one financing option because we know that in mandatory projects like this, a one-size-fits-all approach to financing does not work. We found some information about financing. I mean, there are definitely different options and uh, certainly for different types of property owners. So not only have we engaged 
over 20 private lenders that are here offering unique products for their own banks, we have a public financing option. So we've created a pool of buildings that will be able to apply for a Melarus style tax district, which is a complicated way of saying that they'll be able to pay back their loan to their property taxes over the next 20 years. Now there are three options in front of us, one of which is a complete refinance, second of which is getting a loan specifically for the retrofit, and the third of which is uh, be becoming or enrolling in the PACE program through the city. Well, liquefaction is, is, occurs along coastal areas and areas where we've had streams and floodplains, sediment like sand, mm -hmm. a high water table, and enough ground shaking to cause the sand to vibrate. So here comes my earthquake source, and I'm not going to hit it really hard, I'm just going to get it vibrating. It's the vibration on the sand grains, and you'll see the water come to the surface, because the sand grains are pushing against the water, and it has to escape somewhere, and this is what pushes on the foundation. It can knock the foundation over, and then you can see that it can actually push up and rupture pipelines. It is intimidating. I'm, you know, just talking to people as a layman who needs help, like walk me through this, help me understand what I need to do. You know, this is a difficult process for people to navigate. And because we are a very specialized group just focused on earthquakes, we've been able to case manage this and do a tremendous amount of outreach. So not only have we done some of the informational sessions that we've talked about, but we've also spoken at many different owner groups, many different community groups, all across the city over the last year. Outreach, like today's Earthquake Retrofit Fair, is really critical to the mandatory soft story retrofit program, as well as all earthquake mitigation programs in general. The city really has to get out into the community and help people understand what it is they have to do, how to do it, and also ways to finance it. In this way, the Earthquake Safety Implementation Program is really an advocate and a resource in the community. So why don't we go ahead and, and skip to the Q&A, because I imagine that's what most of you are here for anyway. For months, and for months to come, we have been holding workshops, presenting at community meetings, as well as reaching out face-to-face -face with property owners, tenants, tenant advocacy groups, and design professionals to help people understand what it is they need to do and how to do it. So uh, some of you may be familiar with the Green Finance SF program that I mentioned earlier. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please sign up on the sheet back there. But this is, a different, this is a different way to finance the project. This would allow you to actually have the loan issued to the property as opposed to the individual. So if you were to sell that property, the loan would be assumed by the new owner. And instead of making normal loan payments like you would on any other kind of standard loan, um, this is paid back through your property taxes and amortized over 20 years at a low rate. So this is a fantastic option. I'm in favor of the program. I think, you know, obviously we're going to have an earthquake. It's just a question of when. Obviously, if we do this to the buildings, it improves it from a safety standpoint, also from an investment standpoint. And, and after a few minutes with folks, even if they don't agree with the idea and agree with the concept, they understand it. We've always talked about being able to do this. Now we're sort of being forced to do it, which is a good thing if we can find a way to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> they understand that not only is this protecting their property, uh, studies have shown that every dollar spent on mitigation saves you four dollars after the event. So not only is this truly protecting their investment, but it, it helps the overall resiliency of the city. And then we attach the floor to the stairwell with framing It's the right thing to do. You know, you can look at these soft story buildings and you see three rows of apartments on top of them, and it's built very much like the buildings that collapsed in the marina during the Loma Prieta earthquake. And you just shudder to think that your building could look like that. Now people are really getting educated here, especially today, on really, I need to get this done, I don't want to lose my building. And if people are able to shelter in place in their homes, it's keeping them in their homes, and it's, it's recovering from the disaster faster than we otherwise would. And together we can work towards coming out the other side of a major disaster and kind of shaking ourselves off and getting up and rebuilding and making this community, bringing it back to what we absolutely love, why we live here. At the state level, uh, folks have talked in the Seismic Safety Commission and made recommendations that every city retrofit and mitigate their soft story problems by the year 2020. Uh, to my knowledge, no other jurisdiction of this size has tried to tackle this problem. And if you look at the ordinance and the timelines in the ordinance, we are set to have our program complete by 2020. They're ahead of their time, they're ahead of the rest of the state, they're leaders, 
and I think the quality of people that are here are because of that leadership. It's also spurred this great conversation statewide. Everyone's talking about how did San Francisco do it? And I can't stress this enough, it's because it was rooted in the community. If we didn't have the community saying, us as San Francisco is concerned about earthquakes, us as San Franciscans are concerned about seismic risk, people listen. And you know, talking about our financing options, talking about our engineering requirements, if you look at all of our work, it's all consensus driven, and it's all done to provide options. We don't have one path that people have to follow. We might want the same end result, but we have lots of ways for folks to get there. It's an excellent accumulation of all of the kind of vendors and services that I think I'm going to need as I go through this. So yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased.